Hey, my name is Preston. Welcome to another episode of Barrett Ministries. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about coming to God as you are. And my first question for you guys is, what do you feel like that actually means? Well, I would like to share with you all what I thought it meant a long time ago. Used to, I was into a lot of things that I should not have been into going through a phase of rebellion in my life. I was into heavy metal music. I was into dressing in the whole gothic attire and things of that sort. And I even went to church dressed, you know, in all that gothic attire, wearing baggy pants, spike bracelets, dog chains around my necks, you name it, I wore it, had my hair up in a mohawk, the whole nine yards. And I used to use that as an excuse for coming to church dressed that way. There were people at church that would make comments, you know, about my clothes and I would use the whole excuse well, Jesus said, come as you are, as a means of justifying that. But it wasn't until years later, after I spiritually grew up, that I realized that that's not at all what that means. And what it does mean is we have the honor and the privilege of being able to come to God as we are in our brokenness, our shame, our sin our addictions, our mistakes, the burdens that we carry, even our physical problems. We are able to come to God however we are in the moment that we find ourselves right now. Think about it like this for a second. You, you look at people in the Bible. Look at Paul. Paul was a murderer. Paul hated Christians. Paul hated Jesus. But in the middle of Paul's brokenness, God saw fit to use him to become what I personally believe to be one of the greatest missionaries in history, if not the greatest missionary in history. Look at the woman who was about to be stoned to death for committing adultery. Jesus asked the people, or said to the people rather, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. One by one, they dropped their stones and walked off. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, where are your accusers? She looked around and she said, there are none, Lord. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. You look at the thief on the cross. Here he was in the process of being executed along with Jesus. Right there beside him. And in the middle of his brokenness, at right there, even at the point of death, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, today you shall be with me in paradise. In these instances and other examples that we see in the Bible, Jesus stands there with open arms welcoming, welcoming us to come to him no matter what we've got on us, no matter the dirt that's on you, no matter what kind of sin is in your life, no matter what kind of situations you faced in life, Jesus is offering his hand and is inviting you to come to him no matter what you look like right now, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what your past looks like. You may be thinking to yourself, well, I'm not good enough for God. I got too much on me. I'm too broken. I'm too messed up. I'm addicted to drugs. I'm addicted to alcohol. I'm addicted to sex. I'm addicted to cigarettes. I'm addicted to this or that. that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, I've got family problems. I got this going on. I got that going on. I got problems at work. It doesn't matter. Well, how can God use me? I ain't got but one leg. I can't think straight half the time. I'm on medication. I got ADHD, which I do, by the way. But I don't use it as an excuse. Look at my shirt. Make disciples, not excuses, right? We can't make excuses. God is inviting you to come to him just as you are. He loves you so much. He loves you right where you are just as you are, but he also loves you too much to leave you there. That's the beauty of God's love. It knows no boundaries. It doesn't stop just because you've got a little bit of dirt in your life, just because you've got sin in your life. There is not a human being that has ever walked this earth that has not had sin in their life. But look at all the people that God has used, and look at all the people, including yourself, that God is willing to use if you allow him to do it. He's extending his hand to you. He is offering you a gift. But I'm going to say this, a gift can only be a gift if it has somebody there to receive it. 
A gift has to be received in order to be a gift. And he is offering you a gift of eternal life. He is offering you a gift of having a relationship with him. And God wants to call you to a life and have you live a life that allows his life to shine through you. You may think you're too broken to be a witness for Christ. You may think you're too broken to live a life that is meaningful, a life that is pleasing to Christ. But when God's light shines through you, you will be amazed at the results. I'm going to give you an example. You look at a piece of glass, a perfect sheet of glass, no cracks, no breaks, nothing. When, when light shines through that glass, it shines through really well. Now let's take that same sheet of glass, let's put some cracks in it, let's shatter it. When light shines through it, because there's cracks in it, that light has more angles that it has to reflect off of to get through the other side of that sheet of glass. So therefore, it comes in even brighter. And that's what happens when we come to Christ as we are broken and shattered. His light shines through us. God knows we will never be perfect. But God loves you right where you are, and he loves you too much to leave you there. And so, guys, right now, what I'm trying to tell you is he's offering you, and he's inviting you to come to him no matter what you've got on you. Lay it at his feet. Say, Lord, I don't have much to give. I've got all these things in my life. I've got all this brokenness in my life. But, Lord, I love you. I want what you have for me. And I'm willing to lay down everything in my life. I'm willing to lay it at your feet. I surrender it all to you. And so what I'm going to do for anyone who may be lost or who isn't sure where they are with Christ, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you have any desire, if you feel the Lord leading you to accept his invitation to live that new life that he has for you, to have a relationship with Jesus, just repeat this prayer after me. And so right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pray that prayer. Lord, I ask that you forgive me for my sins. Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I realize that I am lost. I realize, Lord, that I have fallen short of your glory. And Lord, I, I know that you are extending your hand out to me right now, inviting me to have a relationship with you. Lord, I believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I do believe that you came to this earth to die for me. I do believe that you died and that you rose again on the third day. And that today you are sitting alive and well at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I believe you are, you are my God. I know you love me. And Lord, I accept your invitation right now. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you save my soul. That you forgive me for where I have failed. That you forgive me for my sins. And that you write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, this day forward, I ask that you help me to live my life to you. Help me to be in complete surrender to you, Lord. This day forward, I surrender my life to you. My brokenness, my burdens, my mistakes, my cares, my worries, my, whatever is weighing me down, Lord. No matter what it looks like, help me to stop making excuses. Lord, I give it all to you and I surrender my life to you wholly and completely. And Lord, I love you. And thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for my new life in you. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, if any of you prayed that prayer, first of all, let me be the first to welcome you to the family of God. And let me congratulate you on your new relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do not already have a church home, I encourage you to find one. And I strongly encourage you to go ahead and follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And... We love you. We're going to continue praying with you. And just remember, guys, God loves you right where you are. You don't have to be perfect. None of us are. We're all broken. We're all beautifully imperfect. But we can take assurance and find rest in knowing that we are loved by a perfect God. And guys, we again, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support. Please, again, as always, remember... Please hit that like and subscribe button down below. You can also hit the notification button down below to be notified anytime a new video is posted. And we will be praying with you. Feel free to drop us a comment down below to let us know how we can pray with you. We love you and God bless.